Hi, my name is Eric, and I am a voice actor. One of the things that got me into voice acting was listening to the radio as a kid, and one of my favorite shows to listen to was Gas and Killers News from Lake Wobegon. Later, I came to learn of the great storyteller Olson Wells, whose resounding voice and on-air antic descriptions of invaders from Mars panicked a nation. And I started to wonder if there was some kind of crossover between the two. You know, if, if it, well, it's been a quiet week in like Webbergon, Minnesota, we've, uh, we've been invaded by beings from Mars who are intent on destroying our way of life. I always thought that would be kind of interesting. Then growing up, of course, I loved to watch The Simpsons. And so as a result, I would just suddenly turn into Homer J. Simpson. <laughs> Or if I happen to walk past a vending machine, I'd say, Ah, a candy shop. Yes, I'll take two pounds of Bristol's toffee, please. And don't wrap it too tightly. I'm hungry now. And if nothing happened, as was often the case, I'd say, You've made a powerful enemy today, my friend. And another favorite, of course, would be Jimmy Stewart. But of course, there's always Jeremy Clarkson, who I'm prone to be coming as I'm driving at full speed down the road. And then, of course, there's Patrick Stewart. Mr. Data, War Factor 2, engage! And then there's another pleasant fellow I'd very much like you all to meet. Uh, this voice is just called Chef, and let me tell you, he can cook up some damn good gumbo. I love to just throw an off-the-wall voice into an otherwise mundane situation. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, loyal servant to the true emperor Marcus Aurelius, father of a murdered son, husband of a murdered wife, and I shall have my revenge in this life or the next. My little cousin has a really cute voice. One time I was with her at the store and she said, Will you buy me a toy? And I said, well, what kind of toy? To which she responded, An expensive toy. Tom Baker's a great voice to do. In your utter ignorance, you took that to be a normal toilet plunger, when in fact it is the appendage and secondary weapon of the Dalek, my most lethal enemy. One of my favorite podcasts to listen to is The Red Panda Adventures. Jackson Boyer did not die in vain, Squirrel. The Red Panda swears it. I used to love the Doctor episodes with David Tennant. I'm the Doctor. I'm over a thousand years old. I saw the fall of Arcadia. Right now, your lives are in more danger than they have ever been in ever before. And I'm your only hope of survival. If you understand me, look very scared. One of my favorite movies is Master and Commander with Russell Crowe. Every man who has rope a gun, sharp as the word, quick as the action. After all, surprise is on our side. And then at the end when he tells Stephen, Well, Stephen, this bird of yours is flightless. It won't be going anywhere. Of course, another favorite of mine is John Pertwee. Yes, that illustrious scientist who is the embodiment of academic eccentricity. He's always spouting scientific fact, and no one knows what he's quite on about. But, of course, no voice actor's demo reel would be quite complete without an imitation of Sir David Attenborough. And if you listen closely, you can hear the naturalist in his natural habitat. There he is. It was only until recently that scientists discovered that if you take the voice of David Attenborough, reduce the accent, and add a little more, a little more sharp edge to it, it becomes Clint Eastwood. $20,000 is an awful lot of money. We're gonna have to earn it. And to be honest, I'm not quite exactly sure who this voice is, but uh, I, I use it quite frequently. I really do. It's, uh, it's been quite helpful. So that's just about it for now. Um, these are not all the voices I can do. There's many more that aren't on here, but I think you get the gist and a pretty good sense of what my range is. So thank you very much. Bye.